Welcome to this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Bubba and I are stoked today. But Bubba, as as of the recording of this podcast, I know that the Major League Baseball fans everywhere... Uh, second week has been canceled. Second right? week has yep. been canceled. Um, and we, we're not trying to use that as to our advantage, but... I mean, just to be honest, if it wasn't for this, we wouldn't have Kendall Graveman on the podcast today. Kendall Graveman is our guest of the mm-hmm. now Chicago White Sox. Yep. Just signed a new deal. Three years, $24 million. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we would say lunch is on you today, mm-hmm. but since you can't get a paycheck, since you're locked out, uh, yeah. I guess we're buying, right? That's right, until I get a job. <laughs> right. So, I mean, <laughs> as you sit here right now, you have no job. I'm unemployed, so people ask me, Gosh. what are you doing? I'm not graduated college and I'm unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This would be an, this would have been a perfect time to bring back Rick and Bubba the the softball team. Yeah, well, oh, wouldn't it? <laughs> right. Our softball wouldn't it? Man, though? you would have been awesome on our <laughs> softball team. You know, Bubba and I played a little ball. You probably did. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, yeah. Kendall, you probably heard I was second team all county. <laughs> 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 you might have heard about my 125 uh, batting average with 18 home runs. Back in my day. <laughs> Back in my day. Let me tell you now, something. Rick loved it when I threw knuckleballs to him at first base from shortstop. <laughs> yes. but that's, uh... I wish you'd have seen this shortstop to first combination. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, you know, everybody who looks looks like me plays first. Yeah, we can still make it happen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, well, what, what did you call me, Rick? If you, get over there? you didn't call me shortstop. What did you call me? Stocky stop. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's stocky stop for the Rick and Bubba softball team. Bill Bubba Bussy. Quite a range. Uh, actually, he could get it over there. You whipped it over there great. Um, uh, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, obviously, you have, um, you've been in, uh, in the league uh, since, uh, well, the, as far as the show, uh, 2013. Tell us a little bit. You played at Mississippi State. I've got a son graduating Mississippi State uh, in May, by the way. Awesome. And you're from Alex City. That's right. Yeah. So, so Did you t- play high school there? Benjamin Russell. Yeah, born and raised. Uh, loved it. I didn't know any different. And for me personally, Mississippi State was something, the biggest blessing of my life. It was a closed door at Auburn. I had committed to Auburn. And they had a coaching change, and the new coach came in, and I didn't fit into their program. And Butch Thompson went to Mississippi State, and that's how I ended up over there. But loved that place. I couldn't. I'm indebted to that university forever. Rick, you know, if I'm not mistaken, this is the second week in a row that somebody has told us they were committed to Auburn baseball <laughs> right. and got blocked out, locked out, or changed because of a right. coaching change right. and yeah. ended up having a great career somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. It seems like wow. we're, we're thinking. Can't get out of the way of ourselves. We're <laughs> thinking <laughs> Auburn's baseball program for people getting to Major League Baseball <laughs> by not being there. Yeah. I mean, so, 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 so anyway. Somebody. But Mississippi State, uh, yeah. it probably, and I know we're always people say, well, all y'all ever talk about is SEC in the South. But really, I, I, you would have a hard time arguing against there's a better baseball experience for fans and for players for college baseball than Mississippi State. I, I mean, was, it's special. I was able to experience a lot of it. Yeah. Um, and the SEC, especially, I went to every stadium. There's not anything like it. And especially now, I'm, you guys have seen it. And oh, yeah. It's new and $60 million worth of a facility. And that was adding on to what they already had. And I thought personally to see – 15,000 people come watch me on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or us as a team. It was amazing. I didn't, to me, that was the pinnacle of baseball. I really didn't think about professional baseball at the time. I, I grew up going to Hoover and I would watch the SEC tournament, and I grew up an Alabama fan. So for me, it was Alabama. They never even made a call. At least Auburn made a phone call to right. try to recruit me. Yeah. And then, hey, our state programs are on fire, <laughs> aren't they? No, I know what you're talking about. We'll have because you know the Auburn Alabama, Auburn Alabama thing where we work in, in our home state is crazy. And you know, I remember going through with with one of my sons. People were like, "Well, how come he's not going to Alabama?" I said, "Cause they didn't offer him anything. Right. I, mean, I mean, Alabama wasn't interested in yeah. him. You know, I mean, you can't go to a place that doesn't give you an opportunity. And then you go to the Mississippi State and. Honestly, my first year, I thought it was the worst place in the world. And we won six games and lost 24 in the SEC. We were absolutely terrible. Wow. And then in 2013, we played for a College World Series in the finals and got beat by UCLA. So to see that shift also has a special place in my yeah. heart. It's always been a good program. And then to see them finish it off last year and win a, a College World Series and a first national championship from a team sport at Mississippi State um, University is, man, it was special to me. I, I felt a part of it. Kendall, for uh, j- just to, to back up to the very beginning here a little bit for a lot of the young baseball players that are listening, uh, tell us a little bit about your high school. Uh, h- how good were you in high school? I'm, and I'm trying to compare that to where you are now. Right. I, I was. My dad coached um, at Childersburg High School for 
he taught and coached there for 18 years. Well, my well, brother, he, he may have faced me in high school. <laughs> by the way, my brother and my brother and I <laughs> were getting into the age where we were playing little league baseball. So he stopped coaching in Childersburg. Still taught there, but he would come and one year he would coach me. The next year he would coach my brother, and it was a special bond um, between a father and, and son that my dad was able to coach me. Something that we did together um, that really grew our relationship. And for me, going through that season, and then he got a job uh, in Ellick City, and he was the assistant baseball coach at Benjamin Russell. But as far as my athletic ability, I had a great foundation. I played football. I played basketball. I played a little tennis um, when I was younger, and and then baseball, obviously. But I was never the guy that threw really hard, and I get this all the time. How do I throw harder? And kids are always searching for velo. Right. But I knew how to play the game at a level that um, I feel like a lot of kids today maybe lack because they're chasing just the talent and showing velo. And was fortunate enough um, now, through that. G- give us what velo means for everybody I was, not hip. I was 86, 87 in high school, and, and now I've topped out at 99.7. So How in the world? <laughs> a lot of hard work. <laughs> yeah, so, so you really can increase the velocity. Yeah, you is can. Is that what velo is? Yeah, yeah velocity, I think that, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we're just hip. We want to be hip. Yeah, we, we want to, yeah, you know, we're hip, dug out. Out. hip with our baseball turn. <laughs> don't want to come in the you know, dugout. Don't let me know. remind you again, second team all count. <laughs> you're right, you're right. I mean, I don't want to bring up velocity and somebody go, oh, wow, he didn't say velo. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> uh, so I want to hip that up a little bit. <laughs> but um, I, I think personally now looking back, there's been a transition, obviously, of, of the type of player I am and very fortunate and blessed to be healthy and, and be able to still play the game at 31 years old that I grew up loving. And So did you develop – I mean, so Mississippi State saw something. Um, you ended up going there. Um, so is that where you started getting more velocity? Obviously, you were a good high school all-around yeah, player. You right? all talent, or you wouldn't, yeah. have been, you wouldn't have been getting offered to go yeah. play college. But, uh, but it sounds like you really increased as far as – Velocity over that time is that where it kind of it started turning around a little bit as far as going to major league baseball? Right. Well, I mean, you know, rewind a little bit. I was in high school and I was like I said, eighty six, eighty seven. Then really wasn't. I mean, everybody's looking at a talent schedule, uh, a, a scale when you're when you're recruiting someone, you're looking at what they can do um, and what you think that they may possibly be. And I played on a summer league team in Auburn, and, and a guy by the name of Scott Sullivan who played nine years in the big leagues, was my coach. And he saw something in me that was not the talent. He saw the work ethic that my parents instilled in me and, and the character that my parents and, and I believed that they really instilled in me, and he believed in me. And he really got my career started. And then he introduced me to Butch Thompson. That's how I ended up at Mississippi State. But going I was not a highly sought after recruit out of Mississippi State my junior year I was drafted in the 36th round there okay. was 40 rounds then and they were offering me $50,000 I said I'll go back and try to finish my degree I was um uh, a little bit short of my mechanical engineering degree and and then even my last year I signed for $5,000 I was like 89 to 91 and then as soon as professional baseball started I had the 5 months in the off season to really train my body because through college, you go spring to summer baseball. I would go play in the Cape Cod League, and then I would go straight into fall baseball. There was really a whole season, just 162, not only games that you play in the big leagues, but in college you play even more, If I feel like, days um, because you're, you're practicing and not taking days off. But when I had those five months in the offseason, I started really getting into a, a training regiment. I went from 185 pounds to now I'm at like 225, and I did that on purpose. And it's really helped uh, with the velocity and the type of pitcher that I've become. That's, isn't that when you brought Bub in on? Yeah, that's that, right. To, to put weight <laughs> on. You know, if there's yeah, a lot right. of people that work with on losing weight, if you want to put it on, I'm the guy to call. <laughs> that's right. All you got to do is follow me around. <laughs> right. It's easy. So tell us just quickly, kind of what, what kind of exercise did you do to strengthen your your delivery and. Uh, did you change your mechanics at that point? I know when we've talked with Todd Jones before, he 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 threw a lot looser right. as he got older, and it and it actually he could throw harder. Yeah, there was a there's a guy here in in Birmingham named Cal Tinsley, and I got plugged in with him through a guy named Trey Mullinax, who's on the PGA Tour, and he's a train like he's a a trainer in the area that that specializes in sports. Um, and I said, let me go work out with him. I just moved to Birmingham from Ellick City and, and, and Mississippi State and kind of finding my home. 
And we started really working on legs and just the power coming from the base and the legs and um, just how much weight could we move from the lower half. And it started to translate. Each year I saw a tick in, uh, in velocity. And um, I really think that that anonymous season of those five months in off season is what makes and breaks guys. You see guys that are first-round draft picks that think they made it and at the end of the day don't have a long career. And you see the, the 36-rounder that has a, a long career and makes – a living for himself because of the time put and the effort put in the off season. So a lot of diligent uh, anonymous hours that you go through uh, just to try to get to that point, but it's paid off. And that's why everybody wants a quick road. Everybody's looking for um, these days, a shortcut. And I tell kids all the time, there is no shortcut. I yeah. really believe that. And I, I believe you guys think along those same, same, same thoughts, um, just listening to you daily. Um, and that to me is, is the biggest the work ethic put in, um, and I'm blessed to be able to do that. And I'm glad you said that, and you're right. We, we've talked about it so many times. There's this mentality out there right now. If anybody's had some sort of success, somehow it was it was ill-gotten. Mm -hmm. Something was, was happened to them that's not going to happen to me, and it's not fair. And they always think, well, what, what can I do just to make that happen? And when you tell them the grind that it actually takes mm – -hmm. Uh, I, I'm with you. I don't think they understand that yeah. much anymore. It, this, well, it's a it, microwave society. Yeah, it? It, it doesn't. No, no, nobody did you wrong and elevated this person right. unfairly. And if you'd met the same people they met, mm -hmm. you'd be in their position. Or somebody gave them something that nobody will give you. Most of these stories that you see of people being successful, there are exceptions. Yes, but most of them are people who really, really grind and work and, and, and put the effort in, and, and you're not going to get there any other way. We'll come back and we'll continue to talk about the uh, incredibly interesting ongoing career uh, of Kendall Graveman. And, boy, there's some cool moments you've been involved in <laughs> when Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, continues. All right, so I'm looking, you know, do you think that Kevin Hart's funny? Does he, does he own you? Rick, he uh, look sometimes uh, gets off the road a little bit, but he very does. funny. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. Funny. You certainly there's some things, but I could just see him and laugh. Did you know that he was interviewed in GQ magazine, and they asked him what are ten essential things that 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 you would put on your essential list? He put Tommy John underwear on there. So so he like look that's that's one of my top ten essentials. You got to have a pair of Tommy John. So that's how comfortable well, he wants to move. He wants uh, yeah, to be quick. He, he wants to be moved. You know, he wants to be relaxed. So uh, they they they're built. Uh, I mean, they have things for women. So women, I want you to understand, they've got some comfortable stuff for you. But they're it, really the, the the company was built on coming up with underwear for men uh, that are designed to fit us comfortably. Uh, and they're so confident that this is going to be the case uh, that uh, that they say, look, if you don't love this pair of Tommy John's, when you put on, if you don't love it, then you know what? Then it's it's free. It's either the best pair you ever wear or it's free. That's the guarantee. And there's some designs, you know, like the the air mesh interior hammock. Uh, it's moisture wicking fabric, four times the stretch of competing brands. And this is what I love because you know you and I got we got some legs on. Us. Oh yeah. Is is the legs don't ever ride up? And Tommy John underwear comes with a non rolling waistband. You and I need that too. Let's just be honest. Uh, for, for the for the mine will get pushed down. Well, yeah, but it, hey, my, my, it'll, it'll disappear. If it, I ain't it's careful. amazing how it hangs in there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so anyway, if they, they've had 17 million pairs sold to men across America, and if you want to get yours, well, let's get you 20 percent off your first order. Just go to tommyjohn.com slash Rick Bubba. Tommyjohn.com slash Rick Bubba for 20 percent off. See the site for the details. So here we are, Rick and Bubba University. Kendall Graveman is our guest, major league pitcher, now with the Chicago White Sox. Uh, he, he's been with the Toronto Blue Jays, the Oakland Athletics, where you gave us some really cool shirts. Still have those shirts. I know you're not with them anymore, and, I, and I'm almost – Sometimes in a dilemma, do I still wear this? Uh, but I see, still I wear... love the A's growing up. Yeah, that I, was my team too. growing yeah, up. So too. that was really cool. Yeah, and then uh, on to the Seattle Mariners, which leads to one of your uh, really, really bizarre stories. Then last year, Houston Astros got to play in a World Series, and now with the White Sox. So, um, how, how quick did you move yeah, up? Yeah, what, what was your 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 process from being drafted to being on the big leagues? I got drafted in 2013, and then. September 2014, I was debuting in the big leagues at, what? at Fenway. Yeah. So you just skipped right on through there. I did. I was older, and 
once again. Because you went to college. I went to and college, a lot of them and I went four years younger, right? Yes, and I was more of a polished player getting drafted just because I experienced what I did in, in college. High level college. And yeah. I would tell anyone I go to college. Like I think that's the the biggest benefit I had going into professional baseball. Yeah, we interviewed Tyler Stovall. You know, that was yeah. a first round. Draft and I listened pick to him. Yeah, out of high school, and you could tell. Yeah, he has the same thing, and that's coming yeah. from a different avenue. He, he but he does say at, he wish he had got done the college. Thing. Correct, and that's. I think we agree on that. I mean, we've done it. He did it differently than I did, but right. I think we can both agree on that. The money can be made on the back end, but you cannot replace the social skills. The hey, I'm still going to class. I'm still working towards a degree, and I'm also being involved in something as as a team sport. Because as soon as you get in professional baseball, a lot of times it's not a team sport anymore. It's it's me, me, me. Yeah. And I think it developed me character wise, and also friendships and connections that I made at Mississippi State that I still talk to. Um, weekly, monthly, it's amazing. Uh, I would say go. H- how surreal! First yeah, time take you, us there. Take you, us you there. You go to the mound. You're the starting pitcher. Here I am. Made it. I'm in Fenway. <laughs> well, it was it was unique because I'd started my entire career. I got called up. That was back when before the changes of the rules. You could bring up f- your whole 40 man roster. You can have everyone there now. You can't expand the roster in September. So September offered an opportunity for teams that weren't winning to bring up some younger guys and and perform and see what they were made of at the big league level. To For me, I went to the bullpen when I got caught up in September, and it was the eighth inning in, in Fenway. I had already missed a series in Tampa. I didn't pitch. Every time the phone rang, I was in Tampa at Tropicana. <laughs> the phone rang, my heart about beat out of my chest, <laughs> and they did that to me for four days, and my name never got called. And then we go to Fenway, eighth inning, and they're, they call down, hey, you're going in next inning. And I'm running out as they're singing Sweet Caroline at Fenway. It's the most iconic thing oh in baseball, goodness. and in my opinion, and I'm, I, I floated out there, and this was <laughs> when you could, you could face one batter, and the the manager could come get you. Now you yeah. got to face three, and I faced one batter as a two-two pitch away to Cespedes. He hit a, a single in the right field, and before I can get the ball back in, our a Gibby, our manager, was on the mound with me, taking me out of the game. No, <laughs> wow. yeah. So I faced one hitter, gave up a hit, <laughs> and then the guy that came in. My run scored, so I had an infinite ERA for it was like six days <laughs> yeah. before I pitched again. Oh yeah. no! Yeah, and and I thought, you know, all those thoughts go through your mind. I made it here. It's exciting. Wow, what an opportunity! But then it's one batter, but the way your mind works, it's like, can I ever get anyone out? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, I may not ever get anyone out. <laughs> never. Yeah. I will well, never get anybody. Well, you're, out. you're right. facing the best batters in no. the world. In the entire it, it, world. And they're so good. Yeah. And anything you give them, oh, yeah. they take it, don't they? And I was kind of now looking back, happy you just hit a single. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> you know? But it is incredible. With you, you pitchers are so good, but we forget sometimes. But if y'all ever make a mistake, yeah, the, these hitters, you, you pay for it. Oh, yeah. They don't, I mean, they're trying to put food on their table, too. So right, when, yeah. what about the next time you got out? The next time? You went to the hill. I, I pitched in Baltimore. This is another, like, my first two. Like, I go out to Baltimore. If they win that night, they're going to win the, the AL East, which for Baltimore to do that, that was in 14. Well, I mean, you got the Yankees, the Red Sox. Right. You got some right. powerhouses in the AL East. Yeah. And <laughs> they hit a bases clear and triple, and it flips. The leverage guy was supposed to go in. He didn't go in when they went ahead with the bases clear and triple. They say, Graveman, you're going in. So I go in, and I face two batters, and I get a strikeout and a ground out to, thir- uh, to myself. There you go. Come on, yeah, Graveman. Yeah, got two outs. So How hard was it throwing that ball to first base? Oh, man, it was amazing. And <laughs> like then, throwing an anvil over right? there, wasn't it? <laughs> and, and I think the, the unique part of that story is they end up winning. Baltimore did, and they clinched that night. But I was able to experience firsthand, like, the celebratory, like, the happiness that those guys had, and then – walking by their locker room afterwards and, and smelling champagne and just yeah. seeing all those guys, the hard work that had been put in to clinch a division was, was pretty special from a young guy. I'd always seen it on TV, you know, guys celebrating. Sure. I was on the opposite end of it, but it was still special to see uh, for me as a young player in the big leagues. Made you want that. It did. Yeah. So you, you, you look at you, – you go to, from there. You know, first of all, I think to myself, you start out in Major League Baseball playing in Canada. Uh, it, it, it was that strange? I mean, it, it, I, this this how we got a Canadian team. I know we used to have two of them, but I mean, it, is that weird? Is that it is, was weird? Is that a different deal? My wife was like, just anybody but Toronto, and then Toronto drafted me. <laughs> right? Yeah. And seriously, we were dating at the time in college, and she was like, just. And then we go to 
<laughs> we go to Oakland, and it feels like right. you know, you're forever away from there, too, <laughs> right, from home. <laughs> right. You're like, okay, to Canada, where are we going? Oakland. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, a lot of tradition there. Is like we, we were we liked the age yes. in the 70s. Of course, you're too young to probably don't even know about that. But, <laughs> what but, a lineup. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I remember my dad, to this day, screaming at the TV, they dress like a softball team. <laughs> but that's what I yeah, liked yeah, about yeah, them. But we yeah. thought they were cool. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. And, um, so, so they get to pitch a, a place that, you know, had so many legendary yeah. pitchers, Catfish yeah. Hunter, oh, yeah. Raleigh. Uh, let's see, you had Vita Blue, yeah. you had Blue Moon Odom, all those guys. And I got pitch. to know those guys. Those really? Oh, really? So they would come, to the, come oh, out yeah. the park? How oh, yeah. cool is that? And Ricky, Were you too young to know how cool that was? No. I was okay. a baseball. I, Just, I, I don't you know. You know the history. You I know, know the, the history. You know the legends. Ricky Henderson, we're playing yep. cards together. I mean, it's like, it's unbelievable. <laughs> was that blowing your mind? At first, but did, then it's just. Did you want to call somebody and go, hey, you're playing cards for kids? Yeah. Canseco sitting across the table from me. I'm about to start. <laughs> right. Um, you're, and you're getting away from him because sleeveless. you don't want to be associated. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You know? Uh, but, yeah. So, you, you, but but that is it, this is where it's starting to kind of come together in Oakland? It is. Yeah. Where you're starting to feel like I, I belong in right. the big leagues. Uh, you know, you're not always looking over your shoulder like, can I get guys out? Are they going to tap me on the shoulder and send me down to AAA? Which it did happen, which it was good for my career that it happened. I, um, you know, got sent down in a month or so in, in one of those seasons and, and got called back up. But there's some adversity. There was, I, I'm, so, I'm so thankful the A's let me perform at the big league level, succeed and fail, and I grew a lot when I was there. We didn't make any playoffs, but um, I played with some, some good teams, and, and that, at that time the Astros were the Astros, and it was just tough to win that division. I want you to take us to because you you go from the athletics and and you go to Seattle for for one season. Mm-hmm. Tell me about this moment where you were you were traded to the the Astros, and if I if the story if I remember it right, mm-hmm. Seattle's playing Houston. Yeah, if if we can back up just a little. Yeah, sure. Bit, um, <laughs> I had Tommy John surgery in in 2018. Okay, I, I was, was I was living the the big league life. I was I was. I was having fun. Like they were throwing a bunch of money at yeah. me. I mean, one of the contracts I signed right before I got injured was for two point four million dollars, and I was like, I, I was a, a terrible husband and a teammate, and uh, just all the things that I had grown up around. So, and, you, so and you you had let it affect you. You, uh, you. you had you were drifting. There was no no question. I let it affect me. I was I was drifting, and I believe that the Lord, that it was discipline in my life. To take this, I went 18 months without pitching in the big leagues. I had surgery. I had a ligament taken out. I had a tendon taken out of my wrist, put in my elbow, and it learned how to be a ligament. And it took 18 months. During that time, the A's had released me, and the Cubs picked me up and put me on a big league contract knowing I wasn't going to pitch with the option of keeping me for the next year. Now, I'm going through rehab. I'm so blessed and thankful that I went through that because then I lived religion my entire life. I started having a relationship with the Lord. I realized in that moment, look, this is not fulfilling me. My heart, nothing. I'd, I'd tried it. I mean, you go on an airplane and they have as much alcohol on the private plane that we fly on as you want, as much, pretty much as much drugs as you want. Like, you could do anything you wanted to in the big league. And I was, I was just seeing it every day and around it. And I started just daily getting into the Word and loving on the Lord again, and my relationship grew. <clears throat> and that kind of catapulted me into an anonymous season of life of 18 months, but it was the best season. I wouldn't trade it for anything. So God used that 18 months 100%. to turn you around. Yeah. And I wouldn't be who I am today without that. I'm so glad that I went through it. But the Cubs, as I was going through Tommy John re- rehab, I, my neck bothered me every day. I found out that I had a, a, a benign bone tumor oh, in right. my cervical spine, and it prevented me for a season to – to perform, and it was five millimeters from my spinal cord, so they couldn't do any surgery. And it was one of those times I just really had to lean on the Lord again. Amen. And it was saying, just trust me. I, I, I'm i going to get you through this. The Cubs chose not to pick up my contract because of it, and thankfully I haven't dealt with any pain in the past year and a half. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I, I'm healed from that, and I'm able to perform at the highest level. But that's the reason I got to Seattle. And I look back over my career and there's not a mistake that the Lord has set up, even talking about Scott Sullivan getting me from Auburn to Mississippi State to getting me to Toronto to Oakland. And, and the Cubs for a season, they, I, I got a year's worth of service time to rehab, which is huge because I wouldn't have been a free agent this year and signed this contract if not. So I get to Seattle, and then, yeah, 
I play the COVID season for 60 games. I go and I transform into a reliever during that season, and then I come back last year and I'm a reliever. For and, and that's because of, of the injury? But the, 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 the bone the, tumor, when I started throwing 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 pitches right. a game, it really bothered me. They were one, <clears throat> one, one day away from putting me on the IL, the injured list, and my season was going to be over. <laughs> my pitching coach called me, and he said, man, I wish we could just have you for one inning. And I started thinking, and I felt the Lord tell me, just call him and say, I wonder if you can pitch one inning. I called management front office and said, hey, well, I wonder if I can be a reliever. Because if they would have put me on the IL, I would have ended the year on the IL. No one's picking me up. I hadn't pitched in three years. Right. Mm-hmm. I had eight outings out of the bullpen that year after they allowed me to go to the bullpen. And I, I threw really well. And they chose to re-sign me. So that gets us into last season with Seattle. They all right, so let's come, yeah, let's come in. So now you've been moved. Uh, all this has been designed 100%. through difficulty. Yes. To, to to put you in a position that without the difficulty, who knows where you would be. Yes. So we'll come back. We'll continue our conversation with Kendall Graveman when Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, continues. All right, so Bubba, when we're talking about life insurance, it's not a fun topic, but 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 don't we just want <laughs> to – But necessary. But necessary. Right? But don't necessary. we just want to get down to straight up. Okay, whenever the Lord decides to draw me to him, uh, how much money does my family get? That's right. You want to be sure everybody's taken care of. And I know sometimes people get all these convoluted, where well, if you do this, you can do that, and if you want to draw against that, that's not what Ladder does. Ladder, ladder it, it's simple. Ladder is 100% digital. There's no doctors, no needles, no paperwork. Ooh. When you apply for $3 million in coverage or less, Bubba, you don't even, like I say, no doctor, no needle, no paperwork. You just need a few minutes and a, and a phone or a laptop to apply, and Ladder's smart algorithms work in real time, uh, so you'll find out instantly if you're approved. Now, if you want to talk to a person, that's fine. Their team of licensed agents, uh, you know, they don't work on commission. They'll help you, and they're not going to try to upsell you like I talked about all this other stuff. Well, you know, you could do this and put this over here, and you know, no, hey, what if when I pass, what does my family get? And if it's three million dollars or, or less, you need. We're going to get this done in minutes. No hidden fees. Cancel any time. Get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. Ladder policies are uh, issued by insurers with long, proven histories of paying claims. They got an A-plus rating by AM Best. Finally, since life insurance costs more as you age, now's the time to get this done. So go to ladder.com slash rickbub. It could not be simpler. And see if you're instantly approved. That's L A D D E R life dot com slash Rick Bubba, ladderlife dot com slash Rick Bubba. Kendall Graveman is our guest, major league pitcher. Of course, uh, we just found out that uh, uh, another week of games uh, will be delayed uh, or gone because uh, they're, they're in some contract uh, disputes. And we were, uh, um, you know, in a position like you're talking about of um, something we didn't expect for you to be with us. So <laughs> we're talking about your story, this incredible story. You, you're, you're with the A's. You, you end up having to have Tommy John surgery. Then we find this benign tumor, uh, and, and, and it's a bone tumor, right? Mm-hmm. And then, and then you, you come through that, um, and, and you hear the coach say, I wish we could just have you for one inning. And you're like, call him back and say, what about me being a reliver? Right. And now that now they've moved you to, and it worked. You pitched great. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, of course, that also took hard work to be ready for that mm-hmm. opportunity. And now you're at Seattle, and, and, and tell us what happens next. So I go into the next season. I'm in Seattle, and, and my whole purpose of showing up to the field has changed. I, it was all for Kendall and, and my immediate family. Um, but now I'm, I'm starting to see, like, the guys that I'm around, they need me. My purpose is not to throw a baseball. I'm, I'm blessed to do that. My purpose is to impact the people I'm around. Yeah. And I believe we're all created – for purpose and on a purpose, and I started to realize that, and I'm that's why I'm going through the Tommy John surgery. So I'm showing up to the field like loving on my my teammates, the guys I love. You guys just talking through scenarios, doors are opening and conversations are, are happening that I never thought little Kendall Graven from Ellic City could <laughs> could do to a, a guy that I've always looked up to. And so the season's going well. I'm I'm pitching out of the bullpen and I, I I'm throwing really really well. Starting to close some games. Look, Seattle, I stood in front of the entire organization. The in, everybody that's employed by Seattle in spring training had a meeting in center field of one of the minor of one of the spring training fields. 
I stood up. They said, anybody got anything to say? I spoke in front of the team. I've told Jerry DePoto, the GM, many a times my goal is to get Seattle to the playoffs. It's been 20 years. It's the longest standing active franchise to not be in the playoffs in any big any sport. And it's been over 20 years, and that was my goal. So we all put our head down. Our team was going to work. And look, we're playing some good baseball, and we're close. We're, there's a buzz around Seattle and in the baseball community of, like, these guys are for real. And we're playing the Astros, who have won the division and obviously been very good. Um, we hit a grand slam. And the night before the trade deadline, we hit a grand slam. And I thought I wasn't getting traded. At first I was. And then all the reports came out, and they're like, no way they're trading him. they got a chance to make the playoffs. We beat them that night. There's a buzz around the stadium. Everybody's excited to show up to the field the next day. Hey, we can beat the Astros. We can compete with these guys. We can do it. We can do it. We're There's that up. feeling, you know, sure. in, in sports. Mm -hmm. I'm going out to do my pre-routine at like 2 o'clock in the day, right before batting practice for a 7 o'clock game. And I get, hey, hey, Gravy, come to the office. So that's me. what they call you, Gravy? Yeah, Gravy. gravy. How have we not called you Gravy? You realize how much I we love, love Gravy? Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, well, Gravy. that just changed today. <laughs> so it gravy was, train. Yeah, Scott Service, um, our, our manager, called me in the office, and I'm like, this is odd. You know, he's called me in the office where we've had conversations, nothing in trouble, just like having conversations, but I felt it was different. The assistant GM was in there too, and I'm like, oh, boy. So we <laughs> sit down at his desk, and, hey, we've traded you. And, uh, you know, obviously the question is to whom? And they said to the Astros. And you're about to play the Astros. For the second game of a three-game set. And I said, oh, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, they were like, thanks for all you've done for us. This, that, so is other. this in Seattle or in Houston? This is in Seattle. All right, but they're there. My locker room's, my locker room's it's home. 15 yards away, you know. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm there. And the very team you're being traded to is coming to the stadium. They're there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they are at the stadium. Wow. How so weird. I go back. I they we say our goodbyes to them. I go back in the locker room. Guys that are on field started to get word. Hey, you've been traded. Gravy's gone. Yeah, he's gone. And Gravy's so they, how does that work? So the minute they tell you that you're done with the Mariners, are tell I'm me like, that's you, it. I'm you, done you, with them. So I go back you, to the locker room. I'm starting to pack up my locker. I mean, I got stuff from two years in there. Like, it's just stuff. <laughs> they get shirts every day. We get all kinds of stuff. You've, 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 probably, you've called the, your wife at this point, I guess. Say, hey, by the way, text. I'm not with it. Oh, did, you didn't text. I had to go to the other. <laughs> I had a game in five hours. I got For the other team. The, you gotta I got go, so much stuff you gotta to do. You got to go leave your next, new coach. Where's right? my uniform? Hey, what number am I? And by this point, she knew somehow. I mean, yeah, the, the sure. reports are out. She's yeah. got bleacher reports. She's got all of it. Hey, I'll call you when I get a chance. I've been traded. I'm packing up my locker and the, the entire – Pretty much the entire team sitting there watching me. And I've never seen a group of guys so upset. And I believe that the Lord allows um, times in our life to to see the impact that we've made. Right. He opens the veil a little bit sometimes. Sometimes yeah. we don't know if we're making a difference. Right. I, um, I think I think what he does on that kind of stuff, if he thinks you need it, encourage yeah. him. Mm -hmm. He'll allow it. If he thinks it's gonna be damaging to you, yeah, you won't ever know. I saw yeah. <laughs> I saw a bunch of well, we would say grown men cry, yeah. you know, and I'm hugging guys. I pack up my locker and 150 yards down the hallway. <laughs> I mean, literally took me three minutes to walk to the other locker room after I packed up, said my goodbyes to everybody, not just my teammates, but the people that I invest in, I love to invest in are the clubbies, people that are washing my drawers every day, oh, yeah. my socks, like yeah. Yeah. love it on those guys and tell them all bye. I walk to the other locker room and I go from – pretty sad and, and discouraged and upset to now I'm c potentially on a World Series winning team and I got to go introduce myself to all these people not to mention they want media outside so we got Seattle and Houston's media that want to interview me <laughs> this is right so, before the game <laughs> look and and Dusty Baker I'm trying to find him where's Dusty I got to introduce myself to Dusty you know right yeah yeah so he's like hey I'm gonna give you a few nights off I just pitched the night before he said I'm gonna give you a few days off kind of recover and recoup but the weirdest feeling is putting that jersey on five hours after I've been traded. I can't believe that. And how going that went out down. to the other bullpen and seeing the guys I've been battling with for two years 30 yards away in another bullpen. It was strange. What did the Mariner fans do when we, all of a sudden you appeared in another you, uniform? You're here tonight, <laughs> but you've got the other the other team's uniform on. Uh, there was. There was some guys that were upset, but it's a business at the end of the I day. I know it is, but I just— But as a fan, Well, they yeah. didn't blame you, though. No, they didn't blame me, but as a fan, you're upset. I mean— mm -hmm. Now now I was pulling for you, now I'm against you. 
Yeah. Did they have you? A, did, <laughs> yeah. they, did they have you a uniform ready that quick? Yeah. They stitched it up that day. Did, and did, did you get the same number? Because by now you've been playing long enough. Can you demand a number? No, now? I, I, the 40, only I 40, think of things like yeah, that. Yeah, forty nine was retired in Houston. I forget about oh. it. Oh, it was a team uh, way back. Yeah, I don't. And thirty one, they gave me thirty one because I'd been thirty one on another team. So they just threw a three and a one engraving on the back, and hey, here you go, go get them. Kids. I can't imagine how your wife and your kids have to change Not uniforms. I mean, you got to get you got to get the stuff yeah, off. Yeah. You got to get other stuff on. So did it, did <laughs> did what do? And the, I got to buy stuff for my family. Yeah. Like I'm always a team behind. Yeah, <laughs> you're so, on the team store side. Yeah. <laughs> so when you walk in the new locker room, do do the guys welcome you or do they yeah. a- acknowledge you? How does that work? They welcome. Me, um, a lot of them. Were, I mean, I don't. I, I don't want to sound arrogant, but they were like, "Hey, I'm glad that we don't have well, to face you anymore." Like, right? Well, you, you know, know what they thought of? Look, we've all been there. We want to win a championship. Yes, and you're going to help us. And our upper office mm-hmm. just got us a player that's going to help us win the 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 and, series. And the very opposite feeling was going on in Seattle. Yeah, we just lost a guy that was going to help us make the playoffs. Yes, and that's what the toughest part is. Well, and, now, well now I'm wondering what management was, was And so was I've been playing in the AO, AO West for years, Oakland, now um, Seattle for two years, Oakland four years, Seattle two years. So I played against the Astros a lot. I knew just by competing against them. But there had the big story that went on uh, while I was yeah. pitching oh, against yeah. them. Yeah. Um, Did they give you a trash can lid? And <laughs> so I go in. <laughs> And you my probably don't want to make that joke. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, like, you know what? Hey, there's mean. insensitive burgers in the water. Right? Well, they're, 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 I go and Burge I, goes for the laugh. Uh, Ian Gravy hanging out. <laughs> I go introduce myself, and, and and I felt that Altuve was the leader of that team, mm-hmm. just by watching him. That's um, wise. Yeah. And I say, hey, Altuve, look, I'm, I'm Kendall. Nice to meet you. I've I've enjoyed watching you compete and play the game for a long time. Uh, I've enjoyed sharing the field, and I've always watched you play intently, and I, I enjoy the way you carry yourself, and I'm thankful for what you've done for the game of baseball. I said, I will never ask what went on. I don't care to know. I said, I've forgiven anything that's gone on here in the past, and I said, I'm here for one reason, and that's to help this team. I'm going to love on everyone that's in this locker room, and I want to help this team win a World Series. And that was enough for me, too, because I needed it. I needed to tell them that. because Clear there. I felt like they had taken – Food off my table in a sense because of what you heard in the media, and That's I don't right. know the whole story. Yeah, like, I, never, I don't think I any of us don't. really do now. Right. right. So, for me, that was a, a big <laughs> introduction. I, I I said it to him. Then I went around and introduced everyone. I, I, I spoke to everyone individually, and I mean, it was a fun ride because I went from Man. playing against them, everybody not liking them. I put on a jersey. We go to Dodger Stadium for the first time that fans have been in the stands. Because that's who they beat in the World Series when all the, the right. scandal was going yeah. on. Yeah. They love you. You went to COVID love. season, and then you went, <laughs> and they didn't play the next year against each other. And now we're, I'm on the team that goes to Dodger Stadium for the first time. We had extra security, people yelling at me, cheater, cheater. I'm like, I just got here two days ago. Like, Take it easy, you know? Cheater. But cheater. It, tur- it turned into about a month of that. I was like, all right, it's us against the world. Let's Amen. Yeah. What, you, these are your guys now? Yeah, now I know you. Let's all right, go. We'll come back. We'll finish up our conversation today with Kendall Graveman. When Rick and Bubba University, the podcast continues. All right, so let's talk about spring. It, it, here it is. Here it comes. And, and we're, we're starting to get outside a little more. I mean, we still got some some weather to get through, but uh, it won't be long till till it's time for you know everything that you didn't worry about during the winter to look the way you want it to look in your yard. And uh, you look at all the plants that have died, and some are laying over looking pitiful. And, and when you start getting your place looking, you know, like a resort again, you if you go to go with new trees, a lot of times you're like, "Well, it takes so long for these trees." No, I'm about to take care of that. Uh, I want to introduce you to fastest growing trees. Uh, so when it comes from caring for your plants and, and know how matters, and that's why fast, fast growing trees.com's experts, they have thousands of plant varieties that will thrive in your specific climate location and need. So you don't have to wait in lines, no messy cars. You ever try to put, go by and pick up plants and stuff, put it in your car, dirt's everywhere. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that because you're ordering online over the phone and the plants are shipped to your door in one to two days. And these experts, they're going to have your yard looking fantastic. They're growing and care advice is available 24-7. If you need to call up and go, hey, now I planted the so-and-so I got from you guys. Now tell me again. They'll help you with that. So uh, if you're like uh, most of us and don't even have a green thumb, 
they'll make you feel like you do. They won't be talking down to you. They'll be helping you. One million home gardeners have already seen what fastgrowingtrees.com can do for them. So why don't you make the move now? Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash Bubba, and you'll get 15% off your entire order. That's 15% off at Fast growingtrees.com slash Bubba and go ahead and start getting what you need for your yard to look wonderful with the experts at fastgrowingtrees.com. So Kendall Graven is our guest uh, on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. So, so now you're an Astro. And mm-hmm. you, you make it to the World Series. Tell us about oh. pitching in the World Series, but it, it's, it's, it's a little weird because you're playing – the Atlanta Braves, and you know everybody from your home area oh, yeah. grew up being an Atlanta Brave fan, and you're going to have to pitch against probably a team that was one of your favorites. Don't even have Alex City, will you? <laughs> Myself included. I grew up. <laughs> My it, dad being a coach and a teacher, we had summers off, so we'd yeah. go over and, yeah. I mean, especially in the 90s, boy, they were good. I yeah. mean, it was like yeah. anybody in the South, that's it. Of course, we grew up with the Braves in the '70s, so it was weird yeah. to us. <laughs> we saw we saw both sides of that story, which yeah. makes even the '90s more amazing. Yeah. So, so here we are. You you've made it to the series. Every major league baseball dreamer yeah. is saying, "One day, I want to play in the series." Right. Every baseball eye news fan yeah. is on you, and oh, and I had a kid right before the postseason, like our second daughter. So I'm like, I'm not sleeping. I mean, we got oh, yeah. we got a young one, and we got oh, the yeah. electricity of a postseason game, and yeah. you're just sitting there. And, and you really made the adjustment. I really, I, 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 we've talked about this. I believe the adjustment to multiple kids is a bigger adjustment than the adjustment to the first kid. Yeah, and it's a, you're playing man to man. The now. first kid, everybody's on board. We're yeah. all here. You play zone. I mean, those multiples start <laughs> coming in. It's a testament to my wife too, and what yeah. she does, and no, and no then question. she's she flies out to Atlanta. We got the two kids at the. You know, it's, we want to make it a family thing, and I'm trying to leave tickets to everybody. everybody. <laughs> and I don't want to know how much it was, uh, how much I spent on tickets. <laughs> right, you can't worry about that. <laughs> no, yeah. at the end of the day, it, it was it was it was one of those moments. Yeah, you're playing against a team that you grew up, and actually, the the GM for the Braves was the GM for the the Blue Jays when they drafted me, and so it was kind of full circle. Like, yeah. all right, this is this is pretty neat, and. At the end of the day, you're trying to win four games. It comes down to four games, and we were we came up short. But the experience, um, I believe, I win a World Series. I, I really do, uh, and I don't say that lightly. I I believe in my heart, and I believe in my mind that with the White Sox, I'll get it done. And that's just the way I have to pr- prepare myself for every season. That's why I train hard. And you know, it, it was. One of those one of those series that we just we ran out of pitching in a little bit and mm. and they they were hitting the ball very well they made some really good moves at the trade deadline had a good lineup and hats off to them they 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 competed very well and I know a lot of people have that response like hey we was pulling for you but we wanted you to lose <laughs> I, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's one of those Listen, things I, <laughs> I hope you appreciate Rick and I did not hit you up for tickets but yes. how many did Hams ask for. <laughs> <laughs> We won't go there. <laughs> we won't go. So you're currently with the White Sox. We, we, we're about to wrap up here, uh, but now here we are. Everything's being delayed. Yes. And I know that's a that's got to be terrible to have to go through that. And I know there may so much you can say about that, but no. Just talk to us what it's like not to be able to get there. I, I just trust what our union's done in the past, and for me to be able to sign three years for twenty eight million dollars is a testament to the people that sat out in in the nineties and missed most of a season in a World Series that year, and like. It's helped catapult the players to get what they what they feel like we deserve, um, and I know it's hard from a fan's perspective sure. sometimes understanding. But inside the game, I'm not fighting for myself. I'm actually losing money, um, two weeks worth of pay, which is a good bit of money, and I'm doing it for the next generation. Somebody that may be listening to this that's ten years old that instead of making less money than I did is going to make more money by playing a game that's bringing in a ton of revenue and. Well, you have to kind of bond together as as a group of, of players and say, hey, we're doing this for a better cause. And I think that's what we're fighting. I'm trying to keep up as much as I can, um, try not to get frustrated at, at the time frame of it. But I think within the next week or so we'll have a deal done and baseball will be back and hopefully fans won't be too upset with us. 
Well, Kendall Graveman, thanks for taking time to be with us. Thank Kendall, you. we got to get you to come yeah. back because yeah. you, you've had some other milestones in your life. We yeah. didn't even get to scratch. We didn't even get to the DH and, story. And, oh, yeah. yeah and, and batting in Yankee Stadium yeah. and all yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, we hope you'll come back again, and good luck to you. Thank you. Thank I you appreciate man. it. Thanks for the way you carry yourself, yes, brother. Sir. And thank you for being with us on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast.